Uh, hi everyone. So this is how we have deployed our Lambda, SLS deploy minus V. And if we log into the AWS console with that administrator user, then you will be able to see the Lambda here, right? This is the same Lambda. And you can see the, the code configuration, code configurations and all these different things. Code is also representing the same. It's just like a simple Node.js code. Module.export, hello is the handler name, right? And it is just a sync event and returning this JSON object, okay? Now, what all other things you can do with this thing, right? So we can actually SLS deploy minus V or if we can also do SLS invoke minus F function name is hello and minus L right so we will just take a look onto these commands and then we'll move further next thing which we are going to talk about is the configurations right so we are writing this serverless.yml we didn't do any change it was like a simple hello function we already had we added the reason name and we added the profile using which we will be deploying to the AWS because our cloud provider is AWS and you can attach the AWS profile from local so that it will automatically use the access key and secret key to deploy this Lambda to the AWS console because how we are able to communicate to AWS with the help of these access key and secret key. Just keep them secret, don't expose it. I will also delete this user once we are done with this. Okay, so here we can actually see the logs. I mean, just invoke logs. This is how we are able to invoke. You do the change and then you again do the deployment same set of commands we are using sls deploy function name function minus f hello i mean these these examples or these commands will help you to just when you have your serverless yml you have 10 different lambdas you want to just play around with one just deploy one then you can use these things we have another command sls logs minus f function name is hello and T flag right so that will give you the logs for this particular lambda now coming to the configuration here you will see because we are writing lambda we are not doing it on the EC2 or something we are just writing the function we are just writing code so who is managing the concurrency who is managing the the scalability of lambda how many requests I can trigger because it can also be a rest endpoint through API gateway which is targeting a lambda now how much traffic it can have right because there, there are limitations lambda is also having some sort of memory some restrictions but you can scale it easily so first of all we will see what all things are there there is no trigger but you can actually add a trigger what trigger is first of all trigger means we I talked about is it's nice integration with s3 or something right so these are the triggers available like some record is added in the dynamo some uh, file is added on the s3 some message has been posted on sqs you can attach this trigger so that this particular lambda will be executed once that event has happened because lambdas are nothing but some kind of event driven functions right so we will and we will attach it so that that is about trigger we have one function let's again go inside it Okay, we'll talk about other configurations like memory, VPC settings and all. Here inside the configurations, the permissions, the roles and permissions which you see. So I do have a CloudWatch logs and these are the, the log groups. I mean, I have the access for this and we have seen already these things in the CloudFormation stack when it was creating destinations environment variables like sometimes you need environment variables like database configurations s3 x3 bucket names some environment names right these may vary for dev to create to staging environment vpc settings you can actually attach a vpc configurations like in which vpc and subnet you want to have this lambda executing operate uh, monitoring and operation tool so cloudwatch monitoring is already there concurrency so concurrency is something when you want to see this lambda scaling right then you will configure this asynchronous invocation uh, when you want to have actually when when you need asynchronous invocation when you are executing lambda and it is getting failed right then you want to actually put this execution to the dlq that will be that we will talk when we 
talk SQS in terms of Lambda, okay, database proxies and all these things. So all these configuration, how we manage through serverless.yml, that is the next thing, okay. Uh, test cases, I mean, you can run a simple test by just invoking it here. So it will just log this particular message, right? This is same Lambda, which we have already discussed a lot many times and logs is taking time, but that is fine. So this is how we can actually do the command line. So this is all about serverless command line, serverless CLI. In the next video, we'll talk about how to modify this serverless YML to introduce more configuration. It's not like we, we can also write multiple serverless YML, just pass the, pass the reference for each and every API. I have a user resource, user APIs. I will create a different Swagger YML sorry, serverless YML and then I will refer it in the main serverless.yml. All those things will help us to actually write an actual application, which is big, which has a lot of APIs in it. Okay, uh, thanks everyone.